So a very good morning. Welcome to Saturday morning. We love doing these. Uh, I'm Darren. I'm the founder of Aspire and joining me is my excellent colleague, world renowned Sky and everything else newsreader. Uh, he joins me here as well. Uh, Michael, good morning to you as well. Thanks for coming along today. Hi, Darren. It's great to see you. Looking forward to the session talking about the, the essentials of a showreel, what makes a good showreel, what makes a bad showreel, the pitfalls and everything to do with showreels. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this next hour or so, uh, we, we're going to keep a tight hour today, um, is all about really an important tool for you as a presenter. Now, if you're going out to market yourself, you know that you've got to build your brand as a presenter. Um, and for those of you just before we start that don't know just really quickly, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about Aspire and, and Michael and myself, uh, I've been a presenter, a TV presenter for the last 20 years. In fact, I started my first ever live presenting on a Sky channel 20 years ago last month. It's crazy how time goes. It's, it's amazing. I've done about 9,000 hours of live TV. And for the last 15 to 16 years, we've been coaching presenters for television, for YouTube influencers, uh, every type of platform, any reason that that individual needs to get in front of the camera. We are there to make sure and we specialize in making you look as good as you possibly can and helping you along your career path as well. And we love doing the free Zooms, uh, the free training sessions. We offer some free training in London. And of course, we offer our professional program packages every month in London at our studios there. And we also travel all over the world and we work with individuals and companies alike to make sure that whoever's in front of the camera are looking the very best they can. Uh, Michael, just a quick couple of lines about yourself and your and your experience, my friend. Yes, of course, and with pleasure and welcome everybody, by the way. Um, over the course of perhaps three or four decades, I've combined broadcast journalism, writing, presenting in news and current affairs and media training. Sort of I've gone from one to another, sometimes done all three at the same time. But as regards showreels, I've put together loads and loads and loads and loads of showreels of different types, some good, some bad, some perhaps indifferent over the years. And, and ahead of this session, I realized that I've accumulated quite a lot of knowledge about what needs to go into a showreel. Yeah. And going back on that, we were looking at how many showreels Aspire's made over the last 16 years. 2,850 showreels that we've created and probably a few more there. So what our job has been is to really get the best out of those showreels for the individuals. But um, one of the most important things is making them all look unique as possible. And we'll come to that in just a second. But we're here to give you some free advice on what makes the perfect presenter showreel because it really is important. It is a marketing tool. So when you look at what is a presenter showreel, a presenter showreel really is a marketing tool so that you can start letting companies and organizations know that you are a professional presenter. Uh, you can portray your brand, whichever that is, and we'll come to that in just a second, because that is an essential skill or essential bit of knowledge to understand or a thing, if you like. Um, and it's really important to make sure that your show really is right. So a show really is a showcase of your ability to present in front of the camera, regardless of your experience. Maybe you haven't had a lot of experience on TV and you're applying for a TV role thinking, well, that organization probably isn't interested in me because I haven't had a lot of TV experience. But if you can get yourself across in the right way with the right showreel, showcasing that you can present and your abilities to present well, then you've got every single chart, every opportunity, every chance of getting noticed and getting that all important screen test. And a screen test really is a product of the success. If that's gone well, your showreel has gone well, the next stage is a screen test, a bit like an audition, if you like, of where somebody will see you in person after looking at your showreel. So the first thing anyone important that you send your reel off to um, is it really is making sure that that showreel is the very best it can be, Michael, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's right. It's it's almost like got to be the cream of the creme de la creme, the best bits that you select from the work that you've done. And very often showreels can take the form of a dedicated showreel 
based on the job that you're applying for, who they may in the application say, we want exactly 63 seconds of this, 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 and this. You must mention A, B, and C, and D, so that that then becomes uh, your video application, if you like, which is a form of showreel. And this is quite distinct from somebody who's already been working in the industry or been working on YouTube, something like that, and has cut together, has assembled a series of clips of work that they've done already. And I think it's important to distinguish between those two types. But yes, it's got to be the best of the best. And, uh, and on that point, you've got to be pretty good and pretty fair and reasonable and not your harshest critic, but your biggest support in evaluating the work that you've done and going, you know what, without shame, that clip that I did the other day or that recording that I've, I've got from six months ago, that's pretty good. You know, I'm on my best there and that should go in. And of course, the opposite of that is to say, oh, I hate looking at myself, I, I can't bear it. Um, and we all have a bit of that, but that's got to be banished. You've got to be really praiseworthy of the elements of your work that, that are good and need to go into the showreel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So two types of showreel, and we'll come to more differences in just a second, but uh, basically your showreel, um, is either a collection of clips that you've collected from your professional career, or it may be if you're brand new, you go, well, I haven't got anything professional to take. So you need to think about starting to create your own clips. Now, let's go back to basics. Start thinking about what type of presenter you are. We always talk about this. Where's your brand? Where's your market? Who's your target audience? Are you into kids TV? Are you into current affairs, music, travel, fashion, lifestyle? What is it you're passionate about? Get that on screen of you presenting and start building your brand. And that showreel needs to best represent your personality and the areas that you, you want to present. And it really is nowadays a showreel. Think about a minute to a minute and a half. 90 seconds is the length of a showreel that we need to be thinking about. If you start giving longer, when I first started, mine was seven minutes long. Because in those days, in those days, uh, we say, uh, it was all about how long you could talk coherently and it was all a bit slower pace. Now, and by the way, it was on VHS videotape, uh, now it's all about a digital and digital world of instant gratification, right? What do you like? And in the first seven seconds, that person watching your showreel is going to work out, do we like you? Nah, we're going to switch off. Or, oh, I might keep watching. So what you've got to do is your first clip in there, you've got to make sure it's the best clip or one of the best clips. We often say, as Michael said earlier on, maybe keep the clips down to 20, 30 seconds a piece, sometimes shorter, but try not to make them too long or waffly. Try and get to the point and make sure that that shows your personality. It has to show your personality. So if you think about 90 seconds, you might think about five or six clips, 20 seconds each, and it, it really is getting the best out of you. And again, if we think about your brand, think about the pieces on it. If you love travel, maybe you might want to film a travel clip. Or if you are a travel presenter, you might want to include the best clip that not only is showing your knowledge on it, but shows that personality. When we film showreels, there's a lot of time people go, oh, I can't get the words out. And I'm, I, I've got to learn my script and it's got to be perfect. But the issue is, if it doesn't look natural or show your personality, we don't care about the words. We do care about the words and the content, but more important on that showreel is how you're delivering that content. And if it comes across too scripted, too polished, then it's not really doing its job. And it's really important to take that and, and be aware of that, Michael, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And another way of saying, what's my personality? What am I good at is, what do I really care about? What really gets me going? What energizes me to talk about this subject or that subject forever and a day? What, what, what really galvanizes me into being outspoken about a particular subject? Now, it doesn't have to be politics or anything controversial. It can be an aspect of fashion, uh, which you think needs to be brought to the attention of the viewing public or an aspect of travel which hasn't been done before. So sort of 
within the subject and within what you know to be the good aspects of your on-screen personality, you've got to think, well, what can I do which is different? And you've also got to identify your target outlet. And you've got to think, well, what are they doing already? What type of stuff are they already broadcasting? A, how can I fit in with that without duplicating what's being done already? But what can I bring which is fresh, which would fit into their existing model? And that's that's a difficult balance to strike. But as long as you know what your target audience is, as long as you know what your key strengths are, you can combine those two into a very powerful showreel, I think. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Um I think it's all about really just getting getting that mix in there and, and getting that personality across in a very, very short space of time. As we will say, um, you know, human human behavior has changed dramatically over the last, you know, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You know, I, dare I say it, Michael, you know, when you you know, when you started and certainly when I started and attention spans are no different from your viewer than somebody you're selling a show rev off to. So those first few seconds are really important. And you've got to get that message right. You've got to get you across there. And I, you know, there might be people here that have already got professional TV experience. Can you just raise your hand if you've got some clips professionally that you want to put into a showreel? Anybody here that um, that has got anything? Who hasn't? Then just give us a a, a bit of bit of a wave here. Okay, fine. So if you've got clips, as Michael said, pick the right ones. Pick the ones that show personality not too waffly, to the point, and don't be afraid to actually perhaps cut slightly and then move on so that we're not um, we're not having a necessarily a hello, good morning, and welcome, my name is Darren, welcome to the show. We can cut straight into things and it can be a mismatch, it can be just a, a, complete, a nice mix up of pieces to keep it dynamic. It doesn't have to have that um, complete formality. And, and quite often, to give you an example, if you're doing a travel show or a travel piece on your first bit, instead of saying something like, hello, good morning, and welcome to the travel show. My name is Darren, and today we're talking about London being a great city destination to visit. Now, that's quite boring. That doesn't really show much personality. It's a bit like a kind of a factual report, which kind of, you know, for travel doesn't tend to work. So what I would personally do was lose all the hellos, good mornings, and welcomes. I'd come in straight with the facts. I might say something like, 17 million people came to London last year, making it one of the most visited tourist destinations in the world for weekend city breaks. But I'm here on this rather chilly June morning to check out why people keep coming back. It could be something like that. And what I'm doing there is I'm coming straight in with the content, straight in with the personality, of course, with a smile, with the eye contact, and everything that you learn with us or body language, et cetera. And it's cutting to the chase because we don't want to see Michael Dewey, these long winded intros, because what that does is lose valuable airtime that we, we, we only get that short space of time to really create and, and make the magic, don't we? Yes, that's right. And somebody with really original thinking, who's willing to be a little bit adventurous, a bit daring is not going to do the conformist Hello, good morning, welcome. You know, they're not going to do that because that betrays a lack of confidence, perhaps a lack of originality. Because remember, you're not just being judged on your presenting and everything that we've mentioned already. You're also being judged potentially on the editorial content. Now, you don't have to be a journalist necessarily. Necessarily, it can help because it can give you a sense of uh, a stronger connection to the content. But you are being judged over what you, the editor-in-chief of your showreel, decide to put into that showreel. So you're being evaluated on the editing, the lighting, the clothes, but also each and every word that you use. And I'll tell you from my journalism career, the hardest thing to do is to confine a message into a concise space. We can all get our points across if we've got a whole book to write, we've got all the space in the world. But if we've got to get it into 90 seconds and numerous points into 90 seconds, that's where the skill comes. Yeah, so keep it, 
completely on brand with what you're doing get that message across and again you know a lot of mistakes people make um are waffly pieces um sometimes they just think okay well a phone i can video myself that'll be okay now there's nothing wrong with self-shooting and using your own mobile phone or your own camera to film but i you know, we always say sometimes it's good to get somebody to film you. Uh, it, it's good to treat it as a professional, a professional tool, really, because if you don't get it right, if it looks a bit amateurish, that's the only chance you're going to get. Say, for example, you're applying for a big network channel and you've sent your showreel off and it's not that good. And then two months later, you get a professional one done thinking, OK, that wasn't very good. I, I, I need to do better the chances are they've already seen you and you've made that their first impression. Darren, so sorry, Sarah, uh, you have to go, I believe. Sarah, we, we are recording this, so we will, as you've mentioned there, Michael, thank you. Sarah, have a great day. Good luck with the interview, uh, with what you're doing, and hopefully see you soon. Keep in touch. It'd be lovely to catch up with you soon, Sarah, OK? All right, thanks, and Sarah. Uh, Darren, Maria's got her hand up from uh, Switzerland. I think, That's yeah, hand up or waving. Was that from earlier, Maria? If it is, uh, unmute and have a chat. Uh, I'm very sorry. I pressed it as a, a reaction to when you asked the question about yeah, your showreel. Yeah. yeah, I'm not that familiar with Zoom, so I think I probably pressed the wrong thing. I'm sorry about that. No, that's fine. That's fine. It's nice to see your hand up there, even though it is virtual. That's good. <laughs> but, but so sorry, Darren, on the subject of quality, it is a very important point, isn't it? It's got to be as close to professional standard as you can possibly make it. So you've got to, you've got to experiment with lighting, even if you don't know anything about lights. Mm. Maybe you've got to experiment with a bit of makeup and look back. And so... So you're not just rehearsing your presenting, you're rehearsing how you actually look on screen. The colours, the backdrop, the noise level, uh, the audio uh, quality. And of course, mm. this says something tremendously important about your attachment to quality at the end of the day. So there are lots of subliminal messages which say a lot of good things about you, which can be communicated in a showreel. It, it shows you've taken it seriously if you do produce a professional show or get it right. Um, and that, yeah, you're absolutely right, Mike. I mean, don't get us wrong. There are organisations and there are people that have been noticed from video footage or YouTube footage, which isn't particularly good. But um, it's it's really about optimising your or maximising your chances of success. Um, you Like anything in life, if you're going to do it, be persistent, be consistent. Be professional with it as best as you can and, and dedicate your time and invest in it. Now, we don't necessarily mean financially invest in it. What we mean is invest in it um, with your time and put some good effort into it. Because if you get your show real right, then you're, you're going to be taken more seriously. And, you know, we, we always recommend if you get somebody else to film it as well, if you are filming self-shooting, if you haven't got clips, then... The good thing about it, having somebody else on the other side of the camera, is they can say, oh, I don't think you smiled there, or there wasn't a lift we needed to see. And sometimes it's easy to forget that when you're self and oh, that's good enough. And actually you look back and you think, oh, it will do. It shouldn't really be a case of it will do. It should be, look, I'm going to get this the very best I can, and I'm going to keep working at it. So the takeaways from this really are the fact that we want to see you, your personality, we want to hear the message, but more ultimately, we've got to feel who you are as an individual in a very, very short space of time. Keep your clips down. 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 15 seconds, if you like. Get to the point, but get that personality out. And remember that whoever's watching your showreel, the first few seconds they see will determine if they're going to continue to watch. And your job is to keep them watching. And what we tend to do on the showreels on the course is to make it, we break it up. So we'll do a, a quick intro and then 20 seconds piece. And so whoever's watching keeps watching. And that's the goal of it. And another tip is to not, let's say you are planning to put four clips into a short showreel. Don't record all the same clips on the same day, wearing the same clothes against the same backdrop with the same weather. 
record one on a Monday, another one on a Wednesday, another one on a Thursday, because A, your demeanor will be different, so that will provide contrast. You'll have different clothes. There'll be a completely different setting to the previous clip. And it, it will, and different weather, why not film one in the rain? Why not film a couple in the summer and others in the autumn? Mm -hmm. So think about keeping it entertaining, but keeping the contrast so that the person watching doesn't 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 know has no idea what the next clip is going to be, where you're going to be, what you're going to be wearing, mm -hmm. what kind of demeanor you're going to be showing. And also, if 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 you want to show um, a huge contrast in your personality and delivery styles, do a serious clip at the front, and then a more jovial clip, and then a a, a more topical clip. It, mix mix and match. So long as the clips, the way they're assembled, don't clash too much with each other. Yeah, it is. And also, if you can, yes invest in a professional style person to film you or a company obviously it's a little bit difficult for our international audience today but um, often we you know we always invite people down to our studios in london in the uk and we can we film as part of your master class if you were to come on a professional course with us uh, a show reel included which is great because we do all the hard work for you uh, we also help you prep but ultimately, every single person that comes on one of our courses in London has a completely unique content showreel. So it will be based on their personalities. It will be based on uh, their topics and their passions and their branding. Um, but if you can't get somebody to film you professionally, if you haven't got any professional clips that you want to add in, the good news these days, most of us, most of you have got good technology wherever you are in the world. And the chances are that you might have a smartphone with a relatively good camera. Now, these days, uh, our smartphones are really good, you know, 4K cameras, even some of the older iPhones or the Android, uh, the uh, the Samsungs or the Nokia, Nokia, that's a bit old, although there's one coming out. Um, and, you know, they've got very good cameras on them. So for a minimal cost, you could get yourself a simple what we call a joby tripod a little mini tripod that screws in into a bracket into the into the camera because it's really important that your footage when you're filming yourself is as still as possible we don't want too much movement now some of the video facilities of video camera modes have got anti-shake and things like that but it's really important that it looks clean now we often would say film landscape which is obviously this way round on your phone, not vertical. However, times are changing, especially for YouTube, where we're looking at shorts and also Insta reels, where we're looking at vertical, which is not landscape, it's portrait. So it depends on how you're marketing yourself, but a traditional professional show reel should be landscape, which is widescreen, not that way, but you might wanna have the two options, which is always quite handy as well, moving with evolution and the time. That being said as well, Michael made a really important point. Not only has the camera got to be still if you're shooting yourself, self-shooting or somebody's filming, but try if you can to invest in good audio. Now, your camera phone has got a good microphone, the chances are. However, if you can invest in a Bluetooth microphone, and pretty much all of them on Amazon these days are pretty good. They're about $15, 15 pounds start off. Um, they go up in price. Obviously, the higher the price are from 70 or 80 upwards, um, they will interact with your phone uh, via Bluetooth and you just clip it on. Then you've got quality audio. Audio needs to be taken seriously. The way, as Michael said earlier on as well, lighting, is it lit right? Quite often, if you're self-shooting, outdoor shots are quite nice because you've got a nice balance of light. If you're shooting inside, sometimes we have a, a dark look. Raheem, for example, I know we're on a Zoom now and it's not that important, but if you were to send a show reel in with your current lighting conditions, it would look amateurish. It wouldn't look as professional because it hasn't, we're not seeing the face clearly enough. It's quite dark. It doesn't matter today, but if you were shooting professionally or wanting to make it look, try and get as much light as possible 
on your subject, on you. So again, you can invest in a, a small LED light. Again, Amazon, they're about 15 pounds. Um, anything to lighten it up, a light ring, which is uh, having a, a even light distribution around your face, uh, that can clip onto a little stand. They are about 30 pounds on Amazon. I mean, price of lighting has come down a lot recently as well and technology and, and Bluetooth technology. So as Michael said earlier on, get the audio right, get the lighting right, get the video nice and stable, and that's gonna be your technical side. It shows that you've taken your time in it. And then of course, most important is the content in your personality. And of course, it's important to mention that it's not just uh, technical requirements. It will help not only the quality of the showreel, but it'll also help your self-confidence. I mean, there's nothing better than going into a fully equipped studio with beautiful lighting, seeing yourself on the preview monitor and just saying secretly to yourself or recognizing the fact, oh, I look great. I look great in these top quality clothes, which match the background. I look great under these lights. They're just right for my skin color. I've got the makeup just just right for my skin tone, for the conditions. So all of these things are technically very important, but they also give you a sense of self-confidence that you're, you look great on camera. And you looking great on camera is not just about your presentation but about raising the technical standard and making you look as good as you can visually. And all of this stuff, I can, we can both tell you from experience, all of this stuff feeds into your self-confidence. Mm, it really does, yeah. What we'd like to do is, let's open up just really quickly, has anybody got any questions for us regarding this? Because it's really important to know uh, if anyone here is, is struggling or needs some inspiration, or, um, you know, has, has faced any issues or maybe he's got some clips that they want to use or uh, needs to film some clips that they want to use for a showreel or whatever the reasoning may be. Uh, if we just just unmute and just have a quick chat, um, open up and whoever's first will grab. Uh, Raheem. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to ask, uh, because I've done a lot of shows. I've, I've hosted a lot of shows and events, you know, from motorsports to other sporting events, golfing, uh, football. And I've done some serious bit as well, you know, like uh, business conferences and seminars. And uh, I did some other like casual events and uh, more sort of like a very formal uh, state events and state functions and, uh, you know, shows for the government. So I have I've done a variety of shows with different kind of audience and a different kind of genre. So to make a showreel, to make a good showreel that fits in 90 seconds, you know, how do I choose uh, from which of those genres of events that I should take? Should I be thinking of where will this showreel be shown to? Where hmm. will be I sending it to? Or do I just make it general? Because in the past, I, I mean, some of my friends were saying that, you know, I shouldn't be doing a mix of different types of events, you know, too much kind of events in one show reel because that doesn't really tell much about me because, you know, it just gives a mixed idea uh, yeah. for the people who are watching it. Yeah, okay. Michael, I'll let you uh, respond in just a second as well. But for me, Raheem, um, I think it boils down to, again, what is the purpose of the show? And where do you, what angle are you looking at here? Because if you've done lots of different presenting, which is brilliant, a bit like me, I've done everything. I've done, I've done grown up corporate to... Uh, entertainment to travel and, and shopping TV and there's a whole mixed bag. If you're marketing yourself as a general presenter, then it's quite great to show your versatility and dynamics of that. And you can say, look, I can do this, I can do that, etc. Try not to keep them too long. Keep them maybe 10, 12, 15 seconds and move on straight away so it shows a nice eclectic mix. But that is if you're branding yourself as a general presenter. That kind of works there. If you've got any of any of you, you're saying you're doing conferencing and keynotes and things like that, I would say take that off. Do not use any of the stage work on a TV style showreel, because what that tends to do is it, it 
when our showreels are really about having this relationship with you with the lens of the camera when we put somebody on a stage go well yeah but i did a game show or i did a, a big conference and there's me there we don't have the eye contact we don't have the same connection or engagement with the viewer as you would on screen so i would say unless you're marketing yourself as a conference style keynote presenter then lose that off of the showreel and only include the best bits that are more relevant to where you're marketing yourself and building your brand too. So for me, if it's a general one, you can have a mix in there. That's great. It shows your versatility. But if you're angling yourself at more of this particular area, if it's you know something of that, again, it could be corporate, it could be current affairs or whatever, lifestyle, then I would say, you know, make sure it's completely relevant. Michael, your thoughts on that? Yes, I mean, very little to add, really. I agree with everything you said. For TV, it's got to be TV for all the reasons we've described. But of course, at the same time, as you said, Darren, it's perfectly OK having a sort of general show reel showcasing your talents, which perhaps you can keep on your own website uh, for sort of general interest purposes to complement your your CV, your resume. Um, one thing I would say is that that if you do something on stage like you ask a really incisive question try and replicate that on tv so take the work that you've done on stage and think okay i was really really good there let's take that bit and create a showreel element specifically for tv out of that so the stuff you've done on stage can be a really really good reference point as far as content goes but down you're absolutely right for tv it's got to be it's got to be made for tv yeah, down um, the line, down the line. but uh, one one other observation raheem fantastic voice and i'm not surprised that they give you these conferences to present because mm -hmm. uh, you've got a great voice going on there and real authority and gravitas and, you know, I can see you on stage holding together these these conferences, which is, you know, it's not an easy job. Mm. Um, Raheem, Thank you. Yes. how are you hoping to market yourself? Is there any particular areas that you feel, yes, I want to, I, I want to push out for that particular area? Have you got anything in mind? Well, basically, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking about the, those, uh, magazines type of shows you know those casual shows i'm more towards like uh, a business a corporate kind of feel to it you know more sort of like uh you know because here in malaysia let me let me just give a big uh, backstory to it here in malaysia there are two types of presenters basically those who are doing the entertainment magazine kind of show where it's all fun and you know basically it's all fun music and laughter and it's 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 basically just running about the show, you know, just make it fun. Yeah. And there are those who are doing it on a more serious note, on a more serious program. They do like uh, a business, a financial events, uh, magazines, and that kind of stuff. So I was thinking of moving towards that direction. Uh, not so much on being on the entertainment or fun and casual shows. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, completely. I mean that that's that's quite handy then because it's quite it's quite straightforward. So you you just collect your best pieces of you, authoritative, confident. You know, and it might be a lighter, few lighter moments in there, but still showing the authority uh, and and that sort of set that you're going into. I'm, I'm sure you've got plenty of footage there. But what, my biggest advice, really, then, Rahi, would be to stay away from anything that's been filmed of you on stage. You don't need to put that. It needs to be down the barrel of the lens, front line to the camera. Um, otherwise, what tends to happen is it we lose that we lose that real connection. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you, Derek. Good pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, who else do we have? To, did anybody ask a question there, Michael? I can't. I can't see in the chat. So I think you've replied, responded. Oh, you just muted. Sorry, Michael. You just muted there. Apologies. Um, Thomas, you've just unmuted. I, I think you were going to ask a question, and I'll review the chat in the meantime. Okay, good stuff. Yes, Thomas, yes. Like, whenever I present and whenever I go on camera, I get nervous. So how do I get rid of this nervousness? All right. Oh, wow. That's uh, 
That's the age old question that we deal with all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what, what sort of presenting do you do, Thomas? I'm, I'm new to it, but I've, I've, I've tried some trials and all, but it's, it's not working and I get nervous and... Right. Uh... Okay, okay, fine. A lot of it is down to your conditioning here in the head a little bit. Yeah. Um, a couple of things what we do to help people kind of come away from the nervous aspect of it is to kind of demystify everything that you're doing and not feel that necessarily the spotlight and onus is directly on you and people are making all these assumptions of you and, and putting you under pressure on the spot. Um, try and think about what is it you're talking about? You know, what is the message? What is the subject? And make that the focus more than yourself. So mentally think, okay, well, what am I discussing and how can I get this point across? Um, things you can do body language wise is put a smile on the face. By smiling, it's sending positive signals to the brain allowing your nerves to work for you in a positive way than a negative because the brain when you're nervous can't always differentiate nerves of fear or nerves of excitement so we need to trick it a bit and then what that will do in turn is make you feel a little bit more comfortable a little bit more confident because you're looking more confident as well but it is about repetition it's about self-belief it's about believing in the message that you're giving and that you're there genuinely to to deliver a message to the world and you're a decent person start believing in yourself and start just trying to enjoy it whatever you're presenting find an enjoyment factor of it and know that you've got just as much right to be delivering a message as the next person but michael it is we get this question a lot with our with our members don't we our, our, our attendees about how to deal with nerves and there's many different ways of doing it but if we practice and we visualize and we and we keep going, it gets easier. Although we shouldn't dismiss nerves either, we should accept them, shouldn't we? Yes, it's it's everybody eventually finds their level if they persist. The, the most important three words I ever learned during a career where I was nervous, thinking, what the goodness me am I sitting doing here presenting this program it's sort of imposter syndrome if you like the three most important words I learned were I am enough now the the positive effect of the three words I am enough stops the mind from then undermining you because you feel anxious because the mind does not like unfamiliar things does not like unfamiliar um situations the mind goes to the body no information on this no information on this this means that there's something wrong this means that there's potential danger if however the broadcaster can accept that this is just how the mind operates and that behind all that thinking is me thomas who remains capable although uncomfortable then you begin to detach yourself from what your mind is trying to do, which is essentially to undermine you, to go, well, you haven't done this before, this is unfamiliar, so this spells danger. And if you look at it logically, there is and can be no inherent danger because however nervous somebody is, they're still as capable of presenting as they would be if they weren't nervous. Um, so hear what your mind is trying to feed you to undermine you, and then at the same time go, oh, well, this is just how the mind works, trying to keep me safe, trying to keep me wrapped in cotton wool. But uh, thank you very much, mind. You don't need to do that now because I'm Thomas and I can do this. I am enough. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, Raheem, just going back to Raheem, because obviously, you know, Thomas is new to this world. You're you're experienced. Uh, what what do you do? What do you do to deal with nerves? Because nerves are part of us as human beings. We will get nervous. Yeah. In Ten years of presenting. Sometimes I would be nervous, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's often a thing. Well, you shouldn't be nervous. You've done this a lot. But uh, how do you how do you deal with your nerves, Raheem? I mean, number one, I think being nervous. I mean, that's a good thing about being nervous. To me, when I'm nervous, 
I tend to be more prepared. You know, I, I, I look at my script. I read, I read through my script over and over again. I just want to make sure that I don't miss any points out. You know, I just check my lines over and over again. I become more, uh, what's the word for that? I, you know, I, I become more detailed on what I'm going to say in front of the camera when I'm nervous. Uh, and I always think to myself, you know, I'm the best. Okay. All right. Good. It's, 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 you, you know, it's just me. You know, if I just think to myself, you know, my name is Rahim, and I, I'm I'm the best. That's all I have to say. And it's you interesting, know, Rahim, isn't it? It's interesting because when we say that, it's not like, look at me, I'm amazing, I'm the best with the ego. It's just saying that I I can do this, I can do this job, and yeah. I feel good at doing this. And there's a fine line between the ego. And there are yep. egotistic presenters out there. And actually, some of them are doing very well and earn lots of money and are successful. However, from where we're coming from, we, we don't like to we don't we like to take it from the heart and, and make it more personal. But yeah, well done. That's that's a nice thing. Good. Can, can I just yeah. share a tip, you know, what, what I've been what I've done before in the past. You know, I, I love watching WWE. Okay. You know that wrestling show? Yes, yeah. You know, I I I love watching WWE and how the, the the personas of all the wrestlers are when they are in the ring, you know, like The Rock or Triple H, mm -hmm. Stone sure. Cold. They have that kind of persona of arrogance yet self-confidence. You know, so I I at times, you know, I think myself, you know, when I walk into a room or when I walk into a studio, it's like, you know, I have I try to have that persona with me. You know, and that gives me confidence, and you know that basically kills away the nerve. Okay, all right, okay. And and it works for me. Ryan, just yeah. Just two two quick things to add. You raised a very important uh, point, Rahim, about preparation. If you over prepare, and you really know your stuff inside out, that's one less thing to be nervous of. If before you go for your screen test, you've practiced at home on your own camera over and over and over and over again. It's not that you're practicing to present so much as practicing what it feels like to speak into a camera. And it really does help put the mind at rest. The other thing to bear in mind is, I know it sounds a little bit sort of philosophical, but discomfort is part of life. And if you can go into a TV studio or do a screen test, be challenged with some element of public speaking, just going, well, this is natural, this is normal. I mean, nobody likes discomfort, but taking your driving test, meeting relatives on a special occasion, doing a speech at a wedding, any number of things, um, writing a difficult letter, all of these involve discomfort and really the discomfort which comes from having to present yourself just needs to be seen as a normal thing which happens in life from day to day. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ray. Um, Obi, just a quick answer to your question about the ring light. I know, and you might have another question as well, which is wonderful. Um, we love ring lights. If you just do a quick Google on a ring light, um, you can get them nice and cheap as well. Basically, the camera sits in the middle of the light of LED around it. And what that does is distribute even light to you, the, the face which actually then hides any shadows forming, which actually makes you look better. Because when light, certain lights fall onto your face, um, this area for me, especially what I tend to find is it forms a shadow over my eyes and make my eyes look darker or more tired. But the great thing about having a ring light is it just lifts everything. So a ring light is really good. Amazon, you can pick up a ring light usually around the, from anywhere from $30, 30 pounds upwards. Um, you know, they, they've come down in price now, so that's good. And Obi, did you have a question for us? <clears throat> I don't know if you had a question for us, Obi, or... Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I have, a, I have two questions. My yeah. first question goes like this. How do one stay consistent at Renly Brands in making a video or being a TV presenter? Because I've seen TV presenter come and go, and they are not relevant. So how do one stay consistent and relevant in that in that field 
the first but that's my first question then the second question is how do one make a video like if one make a video now and they want to like post it like they want it long how do they make it short for the audience to love because there's sometimes i would like to post some videos and i say that okay it's getting long mm -hmm. i'm like how do i make it short that okay. so that's my are you, are you talking about the show reels or presenting in general for the second question? The second question is showrooms. Like, how do you, like, it's about right. clipping. Okay, so, to... yeah. So if you've got a long piece that you've recorded, it mm -hmm. really is a question of cutting pieces out of it. Now, you will need a little edit suite. Um, you can buy them even off your phone now. You can download an app and... You can do it on your phone or your, your desktop computer. But it is a question, say if your piece is 15 or 20 minutes long and it needs to be 60 seconds, then there's no harm in you going through and thinking, oh, that 20 seconds I'm going to take, that's no good, that doesn't work, that's okay, but maybe, no, I'm going to leave that, oh, that's brilliant. Then you end up with about five or six best bits of that 20 minutes. It is does take time. And it might be that you want to share those choices with somebody else. Uh, so it's not too biased either way. Uh, and then just literally put them together. And if you can, between each clip, put a little black fade and then fade in, it shows that they're not all crashed together and it just gives a bit of breathing space in between each clip uh, because it is a continu it, it's one piece that you've cut up and it looks obvious you've just taken the highlights out of it. And that's what we'd call a highlights reel where you just take out some highlights of a longer piece and just show the highlights of it. Um, but it does take a bit of time and you might need to get some a friend or member of the family to sit down with you and, and look at it and go, yep, yeah, that's good, I agree, or no, I don't agree with you there, Obi, uh, change it for this bit. It's always good to get a second opinion on it. So I would say that that, if you've got one piece you need to clip up, um, have a look at it and just pick out only the best bits and edit it accordingly. Um, your first question, how to remain consistent in the industry. I think that was the question of it because presenters yeah. come and go. Um, a lot of the time for me, which has enabled me to be consistent working within the industry, all right, I don't do as much television as I used to do. I used to be on five nights a week live for many, many years, uh, but I chose to focus my time more on the business and living more overseas now. So you can't always then be in London all the time to work on the channels. Um, but what made it consistent for me was that I just, every time I walked into that studio, I made sure that I got on with everybody in a genuine way, not as an act, not as like, um, I have to talk to everybody. And what I found is that I networked and connected with many different producers and presenters. And a lot of those producers and presenters from various different channels aren't actually always employed directly, they're freelance. And it might be that they're moving on to different channels, different networks, and they go, oh, Obi's great to work with. What a lovely person she is. Um, let's, um, let's, let's see if she's available for the next shoot that we're working on in two weeks time. And then all of a sudden you start building not only a great reputation in the industry, but you start networking and connecting and you'll get emails and calls from people that are saying, oh, we, you know, we're not even advertising for this job because we want to find out if, if you want the job. And all of a sudden you stay within the industry, but people do come, people do go, even great presenters come and go. Yeah. Um, that's a bit of luck as well, because if you have got a great brand and a great topic and it's in trend and that's all you can offer at that particular time, you might find that you're really busy for three years and then all of a sudden there's nothing for a long time. So that's the downfalls or the pitfalls, if you like, of the industry, a bit like acting. There's going to be moments of great success and consistency. And then there's other times of certain uncertainties uh, where it's not always consistent. But if you can just be the best person you can on screen as well as off screen, a lot of presenters forget this. They go, I'm the talent. I'm brilliant at my job. And everyone else, they're just menials that aren't important. That's completely wrong attitude to have. So if you've got the right attitude, um, a lot of the time I've been in presenting studios where, you know, somebody will be clicking their fingers, get me a water, present, get me a drink. I need a cup of tea, get me. And it's like, who are you to be saying that to some poor crew member? Quite often, 
I'd be the one making the tea. I'd be going, would you like a cuppa? Would you like a cup of tea? And they'd be going, oh, wow, that's, that's very kind. Well, why not? We're all in this together. We're all team players. And the more that you can create that atmosphere, people will love working with you. And that will keep your career consistent uh, as much as possible. But you will find it is. I mean, Michael, if you don't mind me saying, I mean, Michael's been consistently in the industry for many, many years, but there's been moments where he's left one organization uh, and there's been a bit of downtime and he's joined another one and it's all all guns blazing. And that's just the way it works. Yes, I think that's right. And part of the secret to my success, if you can call it that, is, which I suppose one definition of success is consistency over a long, long period of time is being nice to everybody you work with, even if they're not nice to you. And one way in which I did it was before I started trying to be friendly with anybody I was working with, to recognize that I as the presenter are not the most necessarily the most important part of the whole crew. Um, I sometimes put myself in the position of director, editor in chief, producer, sound supervisor with a whole desk of 100 faders that they're responsible for. And I'm thinking, gosh, I'm so glad all I have to do is sit here and talk and know my stuff. They actually have as much as, if not more responsibility for keeping the thing on air and looking good as the presenter. And having that had attitude or that realization rather than that, that attitude is a very very useful leveler because you don't put yourself above anybody else and mm -hmm. the other element to add to that is being interested in them how long have they been working here where have they worked before and you find a lot of commonality uh, with with people in that way yeah totally totally um has anybody got any further questions for us about showreels, as that's the topic of today. Uh, Thomas, and I know Mapumi as well, you, you've got one. As, can I take one from Mapumi first? Because um, obviously we got one from you, Thomas, and we'll come back to Thomas in a moment. As a Mapumi. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I don't know if this is related to showreels per se, but uh, basically um, someone asked me for like audition tapes and stuff like that, but then with that, I was doing interviews, so like Zoom interviews. And then afterwards, they say they suggested that I open a YouTube channel. So now my question is, um, in terms of a YouTube channel, like how would I keep it engaging um, by having a YouTube channel doing interviews? Should it be more live interviews or would Zoom interviews also work? Okay. Uh, oh, I can ask that really quickly then. Um, to be honest with you, um, it's it can all it can all work for me. You've just got to really find what if you're going to do a YouTube channel, what is the essence of what you're doing for your viewer? Because if you're looking at a YouTube channel, it's got to be consistent. You've got to come up with content that is consistent so that it is the similar thing. If you start sort of digressing off, etc., um, people get a bit confused and they don't follow you. Um, so I would say great doing interviews. Make sure there's a, there's a reason or what your interviews are about. Is there a message behind them? Are they consistent in what they are? Uh, production wise, there's nothing wrong with you doing Zoom, providing the quality is OK, just for the end user, for the viewer to look at it and, and it's for your own sort of professional mindset as well with it. Um, Michael, what would you just say on that really quickly? Thanks, Darren. The, the advice I would give them for me is uh, make it a bit edgy. Don't just include a series of well articulated questions, maybe include one or two of those, but include a bit where you've got a really good reaction from a guest and the guest says, gosh, and for me, that's a fantastic question where the, the guest is demonstrating for you on your show reel how you in your questioning have made the guest think. So consider the reaction of the guests as well. But also, sometimes in an interview, it's good to interrupt. It's good to show that, that courage. And maybe that's good for a showreel as well. So it can be a series of interview clips, but they've got to be showing different things, different qualities. 
and not just a series of well articulated questions. Okay, yeah, good. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. Pleasure, pleasure for Phoebe. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, really quickly, because we're running out of time here. Okay, like my reading is good. I wanted to be a news presenter. Can I, uh, how, how do I go about it? Oh. <laughs> good. Well, that's, the, that's, a, that's a long question. What I might get to do, if, if you can drop us, uh, Thomas, uh, a nice email after today, you've got our email address. Um, and I will connect you with Michael just to kind of, get, because it, that really is, uh, obviously we're out of time today and that's quite a, quite a, quite a question. And, and Michael is extremely generous in his help with you. Uh, and if you are looking to go down the news route, Michael obviously yeah. is highly experienced in this area and can probably answer some questions for you and maybe organize a special one-to-one coaching session or whatever because um we can do that how much will it cost how much will it cost how much will uh, it that cost? Depends. Well, let, don't worry about that we'll, we'll let's see what you need first so you you ask the we'll we'll connect on email after this uh, after this zoom and we can we can approach that as an individual for you and see if we can help you out all right because i'm sure we can all right thank you uh, Rahim Pleasure. had a question on chat yes. Darren, yeah. if, if there's time i'll take mm -hmm. my leave from you but he says, so uh, you say, Rahim, is there any significant difference between mm -hmm. presenting uh, for TV, YouTube, and other social media platforms? Again, that kind of opens up a can of worms, doesn't it? Yeah, it, no, it does. It does. And I would say, try and keep with the principles, you know, what we teach in. If you can keep your broadcasting head on of standards of presenting for the other platforms, then you're going to be uh, head and shoulders above a lot of the competition out there. You know, a lot of YouTubers will go, hi, everyone, hi, guys, hi, this, that, and the other. But actually, what we coach in is talking to an individual, talking to the lens of the camera, as if we're talking to one person. And if you start to put your presenting for TV head on when you're doing social media, YouTube, uh, Insta, Reels, and all that, you will be a lot more professional. And I think that, um, you know, that's the way we coach it. All right. OK, wonderful. Um, folks, we are out of time today. I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us from all over the world. It's absolutely superb from from South Africa to Malaysia to Switzerland. It's just been incredible to see all of you. Uh, so thank you ever so much for joining us here. Um, Michael is always available. He's very generous with his time. If you've got any questions, you do want to email us directly. Uh, I'm sure we can help you. If any of you need any uh, assistance on a one-on-one -on -one basis online on a Zoom, we can always offer you some special, a special little training program to help you because you can't get to London. Uh, again, Michael is excellent at that, but we can we can look at some special deals for you, so it's um, you know it's cost effective as well. Um, but we're always there if you need us in the future. Um, look out, keep looking out for the Zooms. I know Obi's always been. Uh, great at keeping in touch with that. And Maria, it's lovely to see you. I know Maria joined us on a previous course. It's great to see Maria. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, um, please do just email us directly and we'll come straight back to you. But whatever you're doing today, thanks ever so much for joining us on this Saturday in your free time. And from Michael and myself from Aspire, uh, look after yourselves and we'll catch up with you very soon. All right, keep in touch and we'll see you soon.